All right, while we're waiting for a bunch of glue to set up, let's take a look at something that I got here. Now this Atherin Blue Box GP9, this belongs to a friend of mine, and I've seen it under his layout on the lower level, and it's just sitting off to the side where there's a bunch of locomotives stored, and I've never seen it run. For years I've been looking at it. Because, as you know, my first, my first locomotive I ever did, myself, was this locomotive. Turns out, the story is, he did this as the first locomotive he ever painted himself. I said, what's going on with that GP9? Uh, and he said, oh, it's a dummy. I said, well, you should let me take that and clean it up for you. He said, oh, here, sure, go ahead. So, I got it here, and I want to show you some things about it. So, it has, it's got these trucks, metal side frames, with the bronze bushing. The same old steel wheels. Steel wheels. And so, I'm going to date this at the mid-70s because one of the things it does not have I don't know yeah, that's a good question it has these clips underneath it's got this one on the bottom and it's got this little one on the back side and that is basically the way they kept it even when they went to plastic side frames but what's missing here there's no arm on this side of the truck and we know this, this thing was powered because inside here are two motor mounts and there is something here to insulate it. And what we're missing on this thing, we're missing, the, oh they took it out. Now I see we're missing this piece right here that has a steel arm that went up to put, and then there was a light strip, or there was a, steel spring strip that went across the top for the contact one. I remember when we did that PB1, I restored it to factory original and uh, the motor with the spring clip and everything and then we did a little bit of stuff with the ox guard and the mag one and got it to run super awesome. Well, so here, these trucks have gears on them. If it was a real dummy, one, you would not have, the dummies have, uh, well, at least the ones I have, the trucks don't have, have gears. And I know there was a motor in it. This is the motor. This is not the one that was in here. This is the type, exact one you would have found in here. And what you notice about this is the windings. They are, they are much redder. I mean, by now, 50 years later, they're much redder. And it had these, these steel flywheels. Obviously, I went and polished these. Because normally, they are not clean like that. They're, they're really dull gray. They're like the side of the motor. So that's the motor. Now, I want to I wanna show you something. We're going to test this motor. Okay, so let's get our... We got our... We got that guy right there. Let's see if you can get. Okay. So you're looking at this top number is going to be the voltage. I'm going to show you why this is kind of a deceiving. Because um, it does totally work with DCC, but I'm going to show you why we don't like it for that. And why, you know, many people have found this out. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to clip. I'm going to clip the red. Oh, no, you got to clip it on the end here. Because if you get it on the frame, it'll short. Alright. Alright, we're going, sort of. Damn it. Okay. Alright, we're going. At two volts. See how much power drawn? 
0.19 and I've fixed this motor up a bit so it's better than usual. Look what happens when I just rub my finger against the flywheel. I'm at 0.5 amps. Now I'm going to turn it up. 5 volts. Okay, at 5 volts, all I got to do is barely, oh, you can't even see that. All I got to do is barely touch my finger to it. I don't have to grip it at all. Okay, now I just went to 1.3 at 5 volts. And you see how easy it is for me to stall this? It has like no torque. Let's try turning it up to about 7.5 volts. At 7.5 volts, and I just rub my finger on it, and I stall it out at 1.8 amps. 1.8 amps, this thing stalls out at 7 volts, 7.5 volts. Now let's go to 10. Okay, I'm at 10 volts. Rub my finger on it. There we go, 2.4. And we're not even to 12 volts yet. 2.4 amps. That is why we don't like this. It's super easy to stall. And when you do, it pulls a lot of power. Alright, now let's turn this back down. Drop it down the port. And let's let's pick a different one here. Let's do, this is the FK 130. I like this one. Let's see what this guy does. At four volts. We are turning, and I'll tell you right now, at 4 volts, it has a lot more torque than, than the gray motor had at 10, but I can pinch it. Let's try moving it up to about 8. Okay, now I'm pinching it. Fair, I'm, we'll get them put, it's still turning, and I'm giving a pretty good pinch, but look how much amps we're drawing. 0.3 on a stall. Okay, now at 11.5, we didn't take the other one this high. 11.5, I cannot pinch it and stall it right now. It's burning my finger. And look at the amps, 0 0.3. Let's see what happens if we run her up to about 16. This is a 24 volt motor. Run up to 16. Now it's burning my finger. Okay, if I when I get it pinched, it does not want. I got it up to 0.5 amps at 16 volts. So this is a super super safe motor, FK130, and it's got torque, and it's got low end. Uh, it's very very good safe motor to use, and it fits in almost everything. It definitely fits. It definitely fits in the GP9, no problem. It even fits flat. It'll fit flat in here. And we did. We found out earlier that mounting them flat reduces the noise. So now what we want to do, since, see that? You know what that is, right? That's the 280. That's my new favorite motor. This 280. Is amazing. Let's try this guy at four and a half. Okay. Four and a half. It's going along at a pretty good clip. Drawing 0 0.03 amps. And I cannot pinch it with my finger and stop it. Look at that. I'm getting up to 0 0.5. I can't, I can't stall it. At four volts. Not not unless I use the big players. Look at this. At thirteen point six volts, I'm only drawing point zero four five amps. And there is no way I can stall this. And even if I could, it doesn't I'm guessing it'll be point five amps. This two eighty is so amazing.
That's, I'm going to try to put this 280 in there if I can get the get the frame fixed up here. <clears throat> That's why we like these is because they're super safe. If you're putting in a decoder, they're super safe. If you're using them in DC, they're still super safe. And they have excellent low end. And I got something special at the train show. Let me grab it. I'm going to show it to you. Turn this guy down. I'm going to show you one thing I got, and then we're going to get a preview of what we're going to do next. Okay, now that, this all needs to go in the cleaner, and then it needs to be cleaned up with the paint. So, at the train show the other day, I got this. This here is an Atherin. Should be nine. See that metal horn? One there, one there. So this is the, um, I can't remember if it's Cox or it's Gilbert. When they stopped making them, Atherin got this. But look what's underneath. Yep, it's a high F. Now we found out that, that uh, VCR belts work great with these. And we use a normal 24 volt motor. Just think if we use the 280 with its super powerful low end. We're going to find out. We're going we're gonna to put a decoder in that thing and everything. We're going to get cleaned up and painted up. We're going to put one of these in there. Since we know they fit that shell. Then we will have a high F drive. That it should be amazing. It'll be, it'll be totally silent. And they do have some torque to them. Alright, now we got one more thing to look at. Okay, so on the track there is that SD40. Still got to do a little bit of... One wire is too tight. And one is kind of on the loose side here. I haven't figured out what to do with this. It can't hang down like this. And I don't really want it there. I'm going to figure that out. Now, what I did was, I put, this is styrene, that's thin as paper, very flexible, and it makes a sound. Okay, what I did was on the end of the scoops, I put that membrane on there, because I wanted to turn this thing up louder, and it is louder. Let's find out what... Let's, let's take a look at its volume. Now, there's a bunch of background noise in here. We're going to use our DR5 pulse code modulator. And we're going to check it out. Let's set them right over here. Let's get you up high enough to where you can see. You can see what he can hear. Let's find some way to prop this guy up here. Now, I have not fixed the sound on this yet. Some of the sounds on here don't belong on here. Because I, when I went through the list, there's a bunch of sounds that are from General Electric that are not EMB sounds. And there's a huge drop down. So i got to find, i got to pull out my diesel locomotive manual with all the stats in it. And if you don't have it, uh, oops, this is the one. Second diesel spotter's guide. It's going to tell me what sounds to put in, in each of the settings. There are so many. There's a sound on here which I cannot find thing for flushing the toilet. It's craziness. There's all these random sounds and things. But let's take a look how loud this is. Alright. And zoom in on our decibel meter. And this thing records two channels. Right now, it's just measuring. So we're right around minus 20 on the idling. Let's take a look. Just watch it for like five seconds here. Okay. 
So we're at about minus 20 dB just idling. I'll tell you right now, the Genesis locomotive is not even close to being that loud. The Genesis locomotive, we're going to measure these two side by side later. And it's not even, and I'm going to turn off all the background noise so we can get a better reading. But this is, right now this thing is loud. And I had to turn the master volume down. There are some things, some sound effects that come on at different times. And a couple of them cause clicking. And the clipping, there's a clipping on the speakers and they sound staticky on this, this one sound that comes on and you can hear the staticky sound of the speaker i don't like that it's not the prime mover because that one that one i checked and i turned it about as loud as it as it can go look at that see those chuffs how high up they get and they are Right now, the loudest sound on here is engine idling in the settings. These other sounds are turned down much lower. But because of their, their, their pitch, uh, when they go off, they really get loud. See that? should get one in a second here. See how high up it spikes? Yeah, but we'll run some better tests in a little while. Anyways, I got some parts to get in the cleaner. And as you can see here, the so I was working on the F7 and I was gonna vent the sound through the exhaust, which the exhaust, as you can see, where's my pointer? Here we go. Okay, let's take a look at this exhaust. Okay, so the exhaust, you can see the bottom on it, and this is thick. This this exhaust here, so you can see tiny rim, but that plastic goes all the way to the inside. I was able to use an engraver on the mill, and I could only go a thousandth or two thousandths on each pass without breaking them. You know how easy those things are to break. It took me a long time to perfectly mill out that, so it looks like the stack is an aftermarket. It looks like a it looks like a very high end detail now. I love that. Because that that makes all the difference in the world to me is, is that the stacks look like they're real. But then I was examining a brand new I've got a big base cabinet that's it's only two years old. I was looking at the construction of that thing and it occurred to me. It gave me the idea of using the membrane on the bottom of the scoop, which allowed me to turn up volume. I thought, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this on the F7. I'm going to put that flexible membrane on my long, long pieces here. And then, of course, what happened? I said, oh, no. All I did now was re recreate an iPhone 4 speaker cabinet. Oh, well. It should sound amazing. And we will find out later. All right, let me upload this so you guys... Now you guys know what's happening in the shop here, where we're at. And then I'm going to have, we're going to do another sound check in a while. I want to do it with these guys, but they are not going to be set up for, it's going to be a good couple hours before they are set perfect.